After 18 years as the leader of the Diocese of Providence, Bishop Thomas Tobin is preparing for his final day, a ministry that began in 2005. The mandatory age for a bishop to submit his letter of resignation is on his 75th birthday. I sat down exclusively with Bishop Tobin inside the cathedral to talk about what he's proud of, his challenges and disappointments. I don't know exactly the timeline for that. That's the mysterious part for me. The retirement clock ticking for Bishop Thomas Tobin, who will submit his resignation to Pope Francis on Saturday. It could be accepted on the day that I turn 75 on April 1st. I promise to work hard for you and to do the very best I can. Tobin has served as Bishop of Providence since 2005. He's proud of the diocese commitment to those living on the margins with places like Emanuel House, the emergency shelter for the homeless, which has been open now for 11 or 12 years. So that predates a lot of this homeless crisis. Our work with Keep the, Keep the Heat On campaign, it's raised over $4 million now to provide heating assistance for people. Our Gabriel's Call, the program that provides assistance for pregnant moms and new moms and newborn children, provides material and, and social assistance for them. Uh, St. Martin de Porres Center, the center here in Providence for uh, elderly people, especially in, in the uh, urban core. We've done so much in terms of doing the charitable work of the church, increasing our social outreach. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very proud of the impact our church has had in this state, in this community over the years. Keep in mind, we are the second largest provider of charitable assistance in the state after the state itself. COVID hits, you're not considered an essential worker. That bother you? Well, again, that was a technical definition that was based on, um, you know, the needs of the state and the pandemic and the restrictions and the, the state of emergency and so forth. When all is said and done, the work of the church and the work that our priests and religious and lay ministers do, it is essential. It's essential for the sake of our salvation. Closing down our churches in March of, of, of the pandemic, what, three years ago, that was a very difficult decision for me. It was painful, but we did what we did for the common good as we knew it at that time. Six years ago, you told me we probably have more churches and parishes that we need. That still hold true? Yeah, I think it is. When I came to the diocese 18 years ago, uh, we had 150 parishes. As we sit here today, we have 120. So that downsizing of churches, the changing in mass schedules, that's going to continue. Also continuing. Our priests have been wonderful in being generous in sharing their, their energy, their time, their talent in more than one um, uh, assignment. And that's going to continue going on to the future. No closings of churches this year that you know of? Um, there, right now, there's no active processes to close any churches. An alarming number, 91 priests have retired, died, or left the priesthood. Only 40 were ordained during Bishop Tobin's tenure. I think in the 18 years I've been here, there have been about 10 priests who have left the ministry permanently. That's tragic. It's very sad. There's different reasons. Sometimes there's uh, some bad behavior or relationships they get involved in or a lack of faith, their faith dies, um, some addictions, some abuses. Um, it's always sad when it happens though, and it's a source of great pain for me, for the rest of the priest, and for the parishioners as well. Bishop Tobin says he will remain in Rhode Island and will help new Bishop Richard Henning. Now, coming up tonight at 6, his thoughts on Pope Francis, the sexual abuse scandal, and his answer to the question, is everyone welcome in the Catholic Church?